I thought it'd be pretty cool to make myself some titanium shoe spikes. Now, while I was dialing in this process, I really found out how easy things like this are really getting. So when we were filming this, we actually ran the titanium dry, which is kind of stupid, but we ran the titanium dry and my insert actually broke on me on my face off. Sparks went flying everywhere. And immediately after that face off, I turned on my ACB technology and even with a broken insert, it still flaked the chips out like it was nothing, which is insane, right? But how, how's that possible? Because any of you machinists out there know, if you have a chipped out insert and you try to turn titanium, well, it's not gonna go very well. So. The reason why this is possible and the reason why it works so well is because when you're turning conventionally, you're progressing through the material in a linear fashion. So your spindle's spinning and your tool's just moving forward like this. But with the ACB technology, that's not really what's going on. It's actually creating air pockets. See, what's happening is, is as the spindle's spinning, the tool is staying in sync with the clocking of the spindle and making a waveform pattern that creates air pockets every other revolution. So when you actually look at our slow motion footage, you can see it, you can see it slightly backing off and the chips flaking off. And that's why even with a broken insert, it still breaks the chip perfectly, which is crazy. And you can see this on our drilling, our grooving, and our turning on this process. So I was able to actually run titanium dry without any fear on a Swiss machine. Ah! Well, there was some fear when the insert broke and sparks went flying everywhere. I'll be honest, I, yeah, there was fear. But next thing I want to talk about is how easy it was for me to program this. And instead of sitting here and telling you how great solid cam is, let's go over to my computer. I want to show you how good solid cam really is. And I want to show you how easy programming a multi-channel Swiss machine really can be. So enough talk, let's go and check it out. Okay, so as you can see here, we have our part open in SolidWorks, but I want to show you how easy it is to program this in solid cam from the beginning. So we're gonna kind of speed run this in a way. New, mill turn. We're gonna save it as a PRZ file. That's just kind of what you always do. And now solid cam's gonna do some thinking. Now we have the choice to pick our machine. I'll go to DT26. We'll click coordinate system. I always click a revolution service on the outside of the part. That'll always make the work coordinates in the center of the part. But I can see here, put on the wrong side of the part. So I just hit change to opposite and that puts it on the right side of the part. Now I just hit okay. Now solid cam is gonna do a little bit more thinking. It's gonna create a work coordinate already on the back of the part for me for my sub tools. So now we're done with that, the part's in there. All we need to do is bring tools in and that is also really, really easy. So over here on the left, I can import tools from previous CAD files, which is what I'm going to do. Solid cam, we'll go to projects, shoe spike. And this is the old one I did. This will just make it really easy for me. I can just bring in all my tools. So I will just drag and drop these into the right positions from my old file. And you could do this with any file, right? It doesn't have to be like the same file I'm doing. It can be another part that you have similar tools on. Instead of rebuilding the same machine over and over and over, you can just grab your old tools. It's really, really nice actually. So first thing we do is we face off just like any other Swiss part. Geometry, we'll select geometry. I will go to chain, click on that guy right there. We will say, okay. Yep, it's okay to accept. 
that is our geometry data speeds and feeds i'm just going to stick to 200 surface foot for all these i'm not going to get crazy with it tab and for my feed rate whatever 2000 per rev that's fine so now if i click on this and i select v i can go into simulate and what's cool is, is you have a whole bunch of different ways to look at this but when i'm doing basic turning operations i just keep it simple with the 2d turning one take a look over here we'll single step it and just like that we're facing off cool so that's our first tool path. So on to our second tool path. We're gonna rough and finish turn this part. I'm just gonna go to turning, go to geometry, select the radius on the front. That's where I'm gonna wanna start. Already knows the direction I wanna go. So we'll select here and we will say, okay. Now we will go to modify geometry. We will extend to the end of the part by clicking this point right here at the end, 178. But I wanna clear from my grooving tool that we're gonna do later, which is 62 thou. If you add those together, you get 0.240. Um, we'll go to tools, we'll select our turning tool again, technology. We're gonna finish only. We're gonna semi-finish and finish. So I'm gonna do ISO turning method and I'm gonna leave 10,000 X and 3,000 Z. And yeah, I'm just gonna do one pass. Let's see what this looks like. Select my part, press V. I just want one pass and then a finish pass. So that is exactly what I want. So for our third operation, we are going to drop down with an end mill and put this flat on the part. It's pretty simple. So in solid cam 2.5D, we'll go over to profile. For geometry, oh, we need to select our other machining position so if you look right here we have our second position on mac one that's a work plan i created for the milling points up in x so i will select my geometry now go to chain list now i will turn off tangent propagation and constant z face because all i want to do is grab this line right here i don't want it to do any thinking for me and try to loop around and grab anything so i have my chain selected i will say that is okay for tool select drop down end mill i'm just going to change this to tangent tangent so I'm not going to worry too much about speeds and feeds. I really just want to show you how easy the software is to use and select tool pass and get everything going. It really is really convenient. So let's select this. Let's simulate it. Let's go to machine simulation. So as you can see here, we are now in our DT26. Our end mill's coming up. Step forward, drops down, mills are flat. It's beautiful, but I'm only milling one flat and we need two flats. So let's get out of this. Let's go into our contour. And right here, we can do transformation. We'll do four axis. We'll do angle 180, include original operation, and we will say insert. And just like that, now you'll be milling two flats. Pretty simple if you ask me. So now I'll press V, I'll go into simulation. We'll go into machine simulation. It's gonna drop down and mill the other flat. So there you go, you got two flats now. So all we have to do now is groove behind this head here and then do the single point threading. All right, so next we're gonna hop into our groove tool. Now I drew some geometry right here because the way grooving works in most cam software is you need geometry in the left and right to create a groove. You can't just use a little profile. So I drew that. Now we're just gonna go into grooving. We will select our geometry. And I will say go from right here to right here. That chain right there should do just fine. Tool, we'll select our tool. Just our groove tool should be tool 132. So rough, we are going to say step down constant. I think I'm just gonna do single. That should be fine. There's no need to pack. If offset in X, we'll say 10 thou. Distance in Z, I usually leave like two. Yeah, that should be fine. Semi finish, ISO turning method, rest material only. I'll just make it do the entire geometry. It doesn't need to look for anything special. Links from right safety corner. Honestly, that's good for this. Let's see what it does. All right, so we will press V. We will go to simulate. I'll just go into turning, Let's single step it. Okay, groove tool comes in like that. Rough plunges everything out and then swipes across. That should work just fine. Now on to threading. We'll click threading, uh, modify geometry. I will actually go in and modify this because I know if I start my threading tool right here, it will wipe out material right there. So we are going to go to yeah, minus 14 thou. No, let's do it like minus 0 0.025. End extension trimming. Let's extend it to the end of the part. So it's an additional 25. I'll make it 30 just to make it so it goes all the way through for sure. Tool, select, external threading. We'll do 32 th threads per inch because that is a 1232 thread. Depth, it should be 0.027 thou, I believe is how deep that thread is. Step down, five thou. Minimum step down. Let's do three thou for our minimum step down. Our normal step down, we'll do seven. Link from right safety corner. I think that all should be good. There we go. So yeah, now you can see the threading tool is going far enough. So that's good right there. All right, so now that I've got my turning, milling, and threading all done on my part, it is time to do the transfer. And this is where solid cam really shines because I only had to figure out one transfer in my DT26. And I can actually go over here and you'll see right here in this folder, DT26 transfer. 
I have all these different MCOs that I already figured out. And I could go through all that, but I just wanna show you, once you go through one part, you can just do things like this. Just drag and drop into your tree, use machine coordinate one, and just like that, I just fed my part out, positioned my cutoff, came up with my subspindle, grabbed the part, and did the cutoff. You're gonna see that fully in a second. I select all of these, press the letter V, and I can go to my machine simulation. I can take a look and just make sure it looks right. And we have two views up right now. We will utilize that in a second, you will see. But we will run it. Just make sure it comes over. Counter spindle goes up, grabs the part, cuts off. Looking good to me. Let's go and finish this part. So what we need to do now is just drill the back end and then deburr it with our boring bar. And then after that, we're pretty much done. Let's go to drilling. Let's go to coordinate system. We are in Mac 2. That is the sub spindle work coordinates. We will select our tool. Tool 530 is our drill. I'll say, okay. We will go to technology. Drill end, I kind of love this. You can just click on different features of your part and it gives you the exact number. That is awesome. We'll do the full diameter. I'll just do the turning simulation for this because it doesn't need to be crazy. Drill comes in, drills our hole. And is done. Now let's go to turning. So it's kind of a weird little trick. I'm not gonna actually use a chamfer geometry to create this geometry. I'm gonna use a chain and just tell it to break the edge. I'm not gonna actually bore this. So when I select my geometry, I wanna go with solid. And we are gonna select this face and this face. And we're gonna say, okay. And that will actually generate a chain. And then now I can say tool, select. We have a boring bar in 510. We'll select that boring bar. Technology, we'll just go to break edges. We will say external corners. Put a 5,000 chamfer on there. So let's go to general, go to finish only. Yep, I can see the chamfer. Okay, and last but not least for our operations, we are going to do an MCO. We are just going to simply eject the part. So we'll go to part eject, ask me a question. I just say yes. And there you go. So now we need to synchronize everything. So if I look at my operations, you can see I have a bit of a problem here. When I'm doing all my contours and my milling on the front here, right now the way SolidCam has it set up is it will do the cutoff and then it will do my operations in the sub. And this isn't really what we want. We want our operations to happen simultaneously. So I need these operations to go up here. So it's not a lot of work. All we have to do is delete our synchronizations. We resynchronize them. I right click on this and I say add new workpiece. And that brings it up here. And then I just click on this sync right here and I say delete it. And there you go. Just like that, everything is synced up. We'll save and exit. All right, so we have all of our toolpaths programmed. We've gone through and we've synchronized everything. So now let's hop into our machine simulation and actually watch what this is gonna look like before we post it. And what's nice here is because we have two machines technically running, I can use the two views to watch everything at once. I love this feature, so I'll select the right side. That'll be my counter spindle side. So all I need to see for that is just my counter spindle tools. And then here on the main side, I will zoom in a little bit and we can run it. Drilling over here, looking good. Boring over here, liking that. Might have to speed this up so this video doesn't take 84 years. Coming in, doing our finished pass. Looking great. Mill our flats, groove everything out. Come in, it's gonna thread it a whole bunch. Come up with the counter spindle, grab it, cut it off, and there you go. All you have to do at this point to get your program is press one button, file name, we will say shoe spike. And there you go. That is a lot of work you did not have to do to type out all that code. So really when I see this and I think about how much time it takes me to do this stuff longhand, it is just terrible. I've used other softwares before. Honestly, I really got to hand it to SolidCam for Swiss. This is really easy, so. Before we go, I want to give a huge shout out to Alex Loper for sending me the print and the models for this. This is pretty cool. Uh, if you don't know who Alex Loper is, make sure you go check him out at Loper Machine on YouTube. He does a lot of cool videos, he's a really good guy, also an insane athlete. So thank you, Alex, for sending us this. By the way, I took your design and made it into a death machine, just for fun. And uh, yeah, on another note, before you go, our Swiss Academy is dropping in like a month. So make sure you go check it out because I am going to do my very best to make sure that by the time this academy is completely finished over the next few years, that all of my knowledge is on the internet just for you guys. So yep, make sure you go check that out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit like, put a lot of work into it. Also hit subscribe and uh, ring that notifications bell. See ya.